Of course, we've got the one and only Jenny McCartney in the booth, the social media goddess herself, uh, pushing those buttons, making the show go again today. And, uh, well, yeah, the co-hosts. I guess we'll go with the co-hosts. we got some of those, of course, coming to us uh, live via satellite, as always, from his, uh, well, his perch, I guess, high atop the Mill Bay Studios in beautiful Mill Bay, British Columbia, Canada is the one and only Louis Lawless. Yes, high atop there. Are you there, Louis? You know how to spell my last name on the check, right? It's Louis Lawless. Yes, we got that. Don't worry. Oh, can we cuss? Can I cuss as I always do on on the show? (laughs) (laughs) Now you go right ahead, sir. We've we've got you covered. Uh, It's about f***ing time. Move on. Move on. All right. And also joining us from his wonderful, beautiful, uh, stately... I must say, apartment uh, in Manhattan here in the big city is the one, the only, uh, what's his name again? Oh, yes, Gilbert Godfrey. (laughs) Uh, Are are you ready, sir? What the f***? Huh? (laughs) I'm ready. Good. All right. Yes. All right, Gilbert Godfrey joining us from his lovely home here in the city. And uh, also joining us is, of course, the one, the only George Takei, all the way from his home in Los Angeles, California. George, thank you for coming. I think it's a treat to be here talking with you. Yeah. <laughs> there you go, and, and thank you. That's that's awesome. Well, is this thing on? Uh-huh. Yeah. It's on. It's this on. It's this on. I can't tap it. I would tap it, but I won't do that. So. There you go. That's well... Right. Only one, Meeps. That's us. The only one. HTLA Radio 1 New York. And you're here and you're listening. And this is Straight Talk. And, yeah, we've got 90 minutes of uh, springtime in the city stories for you tonight. And, um, yeah, lots of social injustice stories. I'm in the mood for for ranting. We said we weren't going to do a rant show, but here we are. And it's going to turn into a rant show. It is, yes. <laughs> I can't help but be angry about the stories. You know, there's just too much to be excited about. And everybody's got to bring us down with all this stuff. Stupidity. That's right. And well, we'll talk about that, too, because we've got a great show coming up for you that uh, we've got in development for a little while now. And we're going to launch that Wednesday. And we'll talk about that a bit later. That's pretty exciting. That's called The Spotlight with Kate and Crush. Absolutely, and uh, tonight, a bit of a free-for-all. We're going to tear it up for you on tonight's Straight Talk. Everything from the day's events to some politics good and goodiness and the struggle, of course, to maintain home and work. We'll get into it all tonight. Professional businesswomen that I talk to, they do the work, but it's just the corporate work, and they think that's enough because, damn it, I've, I've just put 12 hours a day in today in, in my job. and Right they feel deserving of something else not to come home and take care of the kids and not to come home and take care of the husband and not to come home and take care of anything else right it's time for them to kick their feet up now and go go hit the bars and relax or something because they've earned it and i'm here to say that as a man we 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 do that all the time we always have we we go out and work our full-time jobs or more right and we come home and we're still expected to be the dad. We're still expected to help the kids with the homework. We're still expected to, to, to have activities and stuff with our family and have that interaction and put that time in. Sure. Maybe that's why we get 100% of our pay instead of 70% of our pay. Right. Right. Well, you're not... Well, in the tradition now, men are also expected to do half the housework. And half of all that stuff, whereas it used to just be before, you know, the garbages and the lawns and all that stuff that you do, the man stuff, Mm -hmm. you know. Um, So, yes, and unfortunately, in some cases, in a great majority of of the households, now more often than not, the women are working and 
you know, I have so many, you know, friends that I know that their husbands take care of the kids and drop the kids at school and do the school activities and do the projects and yes. wash the clothes. And yes, the- but, yes, but with that comes the dreaded beta male because there's not a single one of those men that I have met that I would look up to in battle. No, of course not. <laughs> this is to our, to our thinking, you know, to our thinking. And while it took us years in, uh, and while it took us years in practice, it, it was an ideology that we shared from the moment that we met anyway. Yeah. The whole, you know, that was our vision for what the ideal family was. Ah, uh, yes, the ideal family. Yes, yes, something that, well, I guess, I guess absolutely none of us know anything about. Yes, the, the ideal family. But hey, it's 3 p.m. Eastern, and we're not here to talk about the ideal family today, are we? Oh, no. No, we got some good funky tunes going on, and it is 3 p.m. Eastern in the big city of New York right now, where it's still sitting at 50 degrees and cloudy for this Friday, the 24th of April, 2015. Yeah. You got tuned to HTLA Radio 1, New York's best talk for coffee and cigarettes, the Friday Frappuccino, uh, sending you off on the weekend with a, a bang, I guess, a big kabunka. Yeah, that's, that's what we'll call it. <clears throat> so you might be like, hey, Crash, what's going on? Well, hey, you, you might be a new listener on iHeart or Stitcher or iTunes or well, anywhere, really, and you might not know who the hell I am. Now it's here, Chris Crash Jesus Taylor in the Studio 2 in Manhattan uh, with you this afternoon. We've got Jenny in the booth pushing the buttons and making the show go, of course. And uh, what a show we've got. Today on the big show, anti-Muslim. Killing Jews is worship and praise to Allah. No, I haven't converted. These ads are set to go up on New York City buses and subways. Yes, that's happening today as we learn that Al-Qaeda planned a suicide attack on the Vatican. That's pretty ballsy. Also, we'll tell you where America drinks most as a new study finds and our viewpoint. What are the real problems with the It's On Us movement? Well, we'll tell you. We've got all that and so much more today on the show. So come on in, grab a cup. Have a seat and light one up. It is coffee time. Take it on down, Jenny. There she goes. Yes, the one, the only former social media goddess herself. The one, the only Jenny McCartney in that booth, fading that tunage down. Uh, welcome to the show this afternoon. 303 in New York right now and 50 degrees, as I've previously stated. Yes, thank you. Um, got a good show for you today. And, uh, of course, this show and every coffee and cigarettes brought to you by the fine folks at Tim Hortons, New York City. Now with those eight fine locations all throughout the city to serve your coffee and baked goods needs, Tim Hortons, always fresh. Also, got to do a mention to uh, the fine folks at PreSonus. We're using the Digital Studio Live 2442 broadcast mixer at Studio 2 here. And uh, that was courtesy of PreSonus, and check them out. If you're looking at anything in professional audio, you want to go to PreSonus.com. Yeah. You do. Just just go there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, just don't ask any questions. Just go there. Uh, well, I guess we'll get to the co-hosts. We got some co-hosts going on in the show, of course. Uh the one, the only, Louis Lawless, all the way from uh, Mill Bay Studios in beautiful Mill Bay, British Columbia, Canada. 
Uh, I'm almost afraid to ask, but I'm going to anyway. Louis, are you there? You know how to spell my last name on the check, right? It's Louis Lawless. Yeah, yes, sir. We've got that. I got lost. H T L A. Oh, H T L A. Hell is that? Well, that was uh, your career on that downturn when you didn't win that Academy Award. Uh, We were five steps away from winning the Academy Award. I know. And we did. I know. And you didn't. And that's why you're here. (laughs) Oh, can we cuss? Can I cuss as I always do on on the show? <laughs> well, you know, I'm I'm not going to hold it against you. You you can do that. It's about fucking time. Move on. Move on. All yeah, right, and moving on, of course, uh, to about actually eight blocks down the street here in in beautiful uh, sunny Manhattan, where it's not beautiful or sunny. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there he is, the one, the only, Mister Gilbert Gottfried, sir. Are you ready? What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> I'm ready. You're ready. Well, that's that's good to know. Yes. Yeah, that's that's uh yeah, I don't know. Am I ready? That's uh, Yes. <laughs> that's the real question of the day, I think. Yes. Yes. Um <clears throat> Now, I I most of our regular listeners know that um well, me, me, and Arnold Schwarzenegger, we have this uh love hate thing. Yes. <laughs> Um, basically, I think I love to hate him. Yes. That, that's pretty much what it is. But uh, he is here today from his uh, crappy little office yeah. in, in his uh, crappy little house in Malibu, California. <laughs> 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 yes, he is. Well, I think he is. Are you there, Arnold? Yeah. Uh-huh. And... Um, uh, is there anything you want to add? Never. No. Okay. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Gilbert, you have something? Oh, right. Yes. What am I thinking of? You've got your song. Yes. Right. Okay. Well, um, as per contract, of course, Gilbert gets uh, a little time at the beginning of each show to give us a little song because uh, he's all about his problem child thing. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> So I guess without further ado, I've got no choice uh, legally uh, but to allow yeah. <laughs> <laughs> allow the one, the only Gilbert Godfrey to serenade us with his his lovely song. Or take it away again. Na 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 <laughs> na ba ma 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 ma. Oh yeah. Who wants to grow up? Who wants responsibility? Oh, no, not me. Who wants to show up and work until you're 93? Oh, not me. Now everybody says you're running wild. The teacher's calling you a problem. That was stellar. I think it should be short and sweet. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> well, if you ask Gilbert, he'll tell you that was short and sweet. Yes. But, uh, of course, uh, it, it wasn't. Yeah. <laughs> you being Catholic, you realize that you can have birth control. You realize that? Uh, yes, sir, but it wouldn't have stopped Gilbert from coming there. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's, he's not my child. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, that would be a fun thing, Gilbert. Maybe we'll 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 tomorrow's Saturday. What are you doing? Maybe we'll cruise out to New Jersey and uh, you know we'll, we'll go to Walmart and we'll tell everybody that you're my my son. <laughs> <clears throat> I think they'd actually believe us. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Can you give me any help for twenty five thousand dollars? Oh, not again. Yeah. <laughs> Why? I tried to I no. tried to raise twenty five thousand dollars to enter the Academy Award, uh-huh. and I think it's a fantastic risk because we have a tremendous chance. Yeah. Two hundred. Uh, there's about two hundred members that vote on it, and they mm-hmm. all get. You have to give them a DVD now. Yeah, I wasn't uh, saying why for you to tell me, Louis. I was saying why me, kind of thing. You know. <laughs> Well, and I guess before uh, – well, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Hold on a sec. Now, what is our first story? Well, yes, it, it is kind of a political one. So uh, without further ado, uh, I'm going to play the Crash Jesus political announcement first. Here you go. Hi, I'm Gil Fulbright. The people who run my campaign, they've made this commercial, and I'm in it. 
This campaign, it's not about me. It's about crafting a version of me that'll appeal to you. A version that visits random work sites with paid actors pointing at things. A version of me that doesn't find old people loathsome or pointless. Has a conventionally attractive yet curiously still family. Yeah. <laughs> Listening to my constituents, legislating, these are things I don't do. What I do is spend about 70% of my time raising funds for re-election. I'd do anything to stay in office. My name's Gil Fulbright, but hell, I'll change my name to Phil Goldbright or Bill Fulbright or fill up my mouth with farts. These are the things that are important to me. And these are the fine people that finance my campaign. Now, in order to do these things, I have to stay in office. And to stay in office, I have to keep these guys happy. Now, if any of these things make these guys unhappy, well, my hands are tied. Yeah. So come November, the choice is clear. Do you want another spineless mouthpiece for special interest in lobbyists? Or a spineless mouthpiece for special interest in lobbyists? Same thing. I'm Philip a mouth with farts, and I approve this message. Oh, uh, thank you, Phil. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that was uh, Senator Philip My Mouse with Farts. Yes. <laughs> and uh, his 2016 bid for re election. Yes. Yes. And he's going to go far. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, of course, top story today, I guess, uh, especially for us New Yorkers that are, I don't know, ready to string everybody up. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Well, Gilbert, it's, uh, it's not funny. Yes. No. No. No, it's not. Yes, the big news today. Anti-Muslim, quote, killing Jews is worship. Yes, killing Jews is worship. Ads are set to go up on New York City buses and subways. Yeah, big news. There we go. Posters with the message, quote, killing Jews is worship that draws us close to Allah, end quote. Next to a photo of a man with a kifaya wrapped around his face is soon going to be plastered on New York City's subways and buses after a federal ruling on t Tuesday cleared the way for their placement. Now, the posters are not sponsored by anti-Semitic organization, however but by actually a pro-Israel one, the American Freedom Defense Initiative, classif classified as an anti-Muslim hate group by the Southern, Southern Poverty Law Center, has been fighting to get the ads up since last year. The quote on the ads is attributed to Hamas MTV and is followed by a second uh, that states, quote, that's his jihad, What's yours? <laughs> oh, it, it it is laughable, but you yes. know it, it's it's serious because it's it's true. <laughs> it's, wow, I, I, you know, I, I came to America in, in 2010. I uh, yes, that's when I I made the big uh, the big journey from uh, Plymouth Rock there. Yes. <laughs> Oh, no, wait, that was two Plymouth Rocks. Yes, Sorry, Ann. <laughs> yes I made that uh, big transoceanic journey from Vancouver all the way to New York City. <laughs> well, it's true, and, and it's a hell of a long boat ride. Let me tell you, you thought the, the Cape of Good Hope was a bitch. Yeah. <laughs> Try leaving Vancouver and, and sailing around the world to uh, New York. That's a that's a long one. Yes, <laughs> <clears throat> but you know, I I did it. I made the track and and I did it because you know, ever since I was a, a little toot, yes, a little boy, I've always loved America. I've always loved everything about it. I've uh, the the freedoms, the the, the just the the love. And the <laughs> <clears throat> No, I'm I'm trying to be serious though here, Gilbert. Yes, uh, you know, and and you know that this this the, this the land of the free, the home of the brave. That's that's what I wanted, and I didn't want any goddamn French Canadians anymore. <laughs> <laughs> it's bad enough when my pack of cigarettes had French all over them. I'm just waiting for the day that they have Islamic all over them. <laughs> <laughs> uh. 
Well, and, and you know, don't laugh because that's probably going to be coming because if they're allowing this kind of crap to go on our buses and subway system, then really uh, we can just say and do whatever we want. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, that's his jihad. What's yours? Yeah. <laughs> well, per a 1998 federal ruling, city buses and subways are considered a designated public forum, meaning that in most cases, the MTA can't restrict the content of ads displayed there. However, a legal regulation does forbid material that incites or provokes violence. Seriously, they think this isn't going to provoke some violence? That's... Oh, I got some news for you. Officials with New York's Metropolitan Transportation Authority approved six of the AFDI's other anti-Islamic ads back in September, but rejected the Killing Jews poster. <laughs> and, well, you know, when half of the city is Jews... Yes. Um, yeah, because they feared that the second line of the ad could be interpreted as a call to violence. U.S. District Judge John Kodal ruled Tuesday that the MTA cannot prevent the ads from running. Quote, there is no evidence that seeing one of these ads on the back of a bus would be a significant to trigger a violent reaction. Therefore, these ads, offensive as they may be, are still entitled to First Amendment protection, Kodal said. Hmm. I wonder if they... I'm, I'm going to check into that. It's like uh, 3800 bucks for, for, I think, a week to run a, a full back uh, bus ad or a full side or something. I'm, I'm going to call them up today and see if I can have a picture of a black man hanging in a tree... <laughs> And, and 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 just see if that's okay, you yes. know. I, you know, with with this judge's new ruling and all, I mean, clearly it must be. Yeah. Well, the AFDI president Pamela Geller tweeted that the decision was a victory. Victory. Judge rules for us in AFDI versus MTA. The MTA's theory is thoroughly unpersuasive. No. <laughs> you know, just because you paid off a judge. Yes. <laughs> uh, well, the ads that were not initially rejected went up last year. That include po included posters with the message, Yesterday's moderate is today's headline. Yeah. <laughs> And others demanding the U.S. stop providing aid to Islamic countries. Well, you know, I, I can't I, I can't disagree with that one. Yeah. You shut up. <laughs> I told you you're just a place filler until we can get Robert Downey on Monday. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> well the ads that were not initially uh yes, they went up and, and stopped providing aid to Islamic countries. Yes. Yeah. Religious leaders and many elected officials condemned the ads Islamophobic messages. These ads are vile, hateful, indecent, and only serve to fan the flames of intolerance. This from uh, Representative Hakeem Jeffries, a Democrat in New York. <laughs> <laughs> well, the New York's MTA has tried and failed to reject AFDI campaigns in the past. Uh, a nearby, or nearly, actually, I should say, identical situation played out in 2012. When the MTA refused to run ads reading, quote, in any war between the civilized man and the savage, support the civilized man, support Israel, defeat jihad. <laughs> <laughs> well, officials argued that the ad was offensive to Palestinians and to Muslims as a whole, but the federal judge ruled that prohibiting the ad was a free speech violation. So there you go. I'm going to string up my black man. I'm going to... New York is not the only city plagued by the AFDI advertisements either. The anti-Islamic messages have been appearing on public trans transit nationwide, including Washington, D.C., Chicago, uh, even, even San Francisco. Yeah. <laughs> 
Well, in response to the public outcry about a, a 2013 AFDI campaign on San Francisco buses, the city's transit authority opted to, quote, donate all revenue from the ads to San Francisco's Human Rights Commission. And who says bribery is dead? <laughs> When a judge ruled in March that the Philadelphia Transit Authority could not reject a particular AFDI ad, the Transit Authority enacted a blanket ban on all political, public issue, and non-commercial ads, according to the Christian Science Monitor. See, now, now that's the other thing. That's the other thing. Now, <clears throat> you know, whether you're pro-Israel or pro-Islam or, I don't know, pro-hockey... <laughs> You know, whether you're you know, whatever whatever it is you're pro out there, uh, I don't think that anybody. Well, I'm not a judge, yes. but <laughs> you know, I don't see how anybody has the right to go out and and put up ads. Now, now remember, back in the day, ads used to be you know things that companies would use to advertise. That's why they called them ads. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and then the the ads would sell whatever the product was, yes. and and you would you know, oh yes, Revlon, I know that. Yes. <laughs> I buy that lip liner all the time. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but no, no, when you start to to turn the the ads around, and you decide, oh well, I'm going to say whatever the hell it is I want, and I'll just pay for the ad space. Well, is that a problem? You know, that, yes. that's that's really what you got to ask yourself. Is that a problem? Because no matter what it is, everybody in this country has the right to say it. Yes. Yes. No. No. Yes. <laughs> no. No, they, they don't. You, you stop and think. You, what what would happen if if good old Crash Jesus here, you know, uh, did did some paste up and didn't add for the black man hanging in the tree, <laughs> and <laughs> and, then, and then went and said whatever the hell I wanted about the picture of the black man hanging in the tree? Yes, <laughs> right. And and you know just just you know just for you know we'll call it a frat prank. Just put it up, you know. <laughs> We'll just put that up, and 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 that's legal. Yes. Yeah. That, that, absolutely. That's what they're saying here. Uh, I've got a I've got a problem with that. I really do. That's it's like you know. Next thing, the Westboro Baptist Church will be taking out billboards in Times Square. You know. <laughs> <laughs> Soldiers are fags. Yes. <laughs> well, what are you going to do? I don't know what the answer is, but but man, I I can tell you. First frickin' hand this morning. There was people in the street uh, in New York here today arguing, openly arguing, yelling, shouting, nose to nose with each other. You telling me that's not going to promote some violence? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Your Honor, uh, if it please the court, uh, come down to uh, Times Square. And, yes. Uh, <laughs> This just hours after your ruling, yes. and uh, take a look at that. Yeah. He's, he's got a bat with a nail in it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, we do have some good news, of course, on the show today, and that is where America drinks the most. <laughs> mm. Yes, where does America drink the most? Well, we're going to tell you. And we're going to tell you coming up right after this first commercial break, so don't go anywhere. You've got it locked to New York's best talk, HTLA Radio 1. What if there was a coffee that was sourced from some of the world's most renowned growing regions? Abundant with rich, fertile soil. What if this coffee was picked at the perfect moment, then packed meticulously and shipped carefully to be roasted under the watchful eye of coffee masters? What if it was expertly blended, ground, and sealed 
ensuring maximum flavor and freshness. Then brewed in small batches and always served fresh within 20 minutes, just the way you like it. Now, what if this coffee just happened to be the coffee you already know and love? Tim Hortons, always fresh, always great tasting coffee. Man, I've been to a lot of places over these past 50 years. Seen the whole true north strong and free. Cause I've been everywhere, man. I've been everywhere. I've been to Cooksville, Stowville, Bainesville, Bowmanville, Bonneville, Unionville, Oakville, Dunville, Brockville, Boucherville, Melville, Drummondville, Kentville, Grenville, Morinville, Maryville, Parksville, Stephenville, Sackville, Spring Hill, Westville, Walkerville, hanging on a windowsill. Hey! He said, wow, that's a lot of places. I said, hang on, there's more. I've been to Moncton, Picton, Shannon, Vernon, Stellarton, Hamilton, Nipigon, Nobleton, Yorkton, Brighton, Bolton, Beaverton, Brandon, Edmonton, Walkerton, Wyerton, Granby, Miramichi, Charlottetown, Burnaby, Yellow Knight, White Horse, Cornerbrook, none of it. I've been everywhere, man. I've been everywhere, man. I've crossed the prairies, bare, man. I've breathed the mountain air. I've traveled, I've done my share, man. I've been everywhere, man. Some said the U.S. has lost its innovative power. We said America is lighting the way as the innovation nation. Singular insights, superior execution. That's the power of global connections. Bank of America, Merrill Lynch. Voted top global research firm, 2011, 12, and 13. Automatic freshness, softness, and static control has never been easier with the Bounce Dryer Bar. I just stick it to the inside of my dryer, and I never have to remember. Oh, Old Spice Body Spray makes you smell like power! It's so powerful, it sells itself in other people's commercials! You smell like outdoor freshness. You smell like power? Yeah, I do! Power! I've been so inspired by being in New York because everything from what people are wearing on the street to the way they're interacting with each other to drive through the West Village at night and you see a couple kissing on the street or you see someone fighting outside their apartment or you see so much humanity on a daily basis that even if you're not inspired by your own life that day, you can be inspired by someone else's life. You got them There's only one place to get more Taylor. We're New York's best talk radio, HTLA Radio 1. Well, I mean, it's natural when you're a young kid and you're 15 years old and you say to your parents uh, that you want to be the greatest bodybuilder in the world and you're going to eventually become a movie star and a millionaire. You know, that they have a tendency of taking you to the shrink. Well, I think whenever you do greater things, it's unusual. It's, it's strange, it's weird. I mean, you know, that, that there are very few people in the, in the world that does what you do. Yeah. If you would have told your parents when you were a kid, is it, that's what I want to do. I'm sure your parents would have said, I mean, I don't know your parents, but I mean, they would have said, you know, Honey, why don't you just go to school and relax? Wow, man. You know, I love how you use the, the segue back from the commercial to start freaking talking. That is... <laughs> You know, no, nobody asked you to talk, buddy. Yes. <laughs> well, welcome back to the big program today. Coffee and cigarettes, your Friday Frappuccino, HTLA Radio 1, New York's best talk. Where it's 53 in the city right now. It's warming up. Sun's coming out. And uh, we're looking at 61 is the high for tomorrow and sun all day long. Yes. Yeah. You're going to want to get out and get into some of that. 
Yes, your Friday Frappuccino for the 24th of April, 2015. Yes, I know what day it is. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Sex is only the tip of the iceberg. Well, that, that may be, Louie, but we're not talking about sex right now. <laughs> mm. No, we're not. And actually, if you, uh, well, if you were part of that first segment there, you, you heard the, the news. Yes. The lovely news, yes. Anti-Muslim advertising is okay, so Crash is going to be putting out his hang a black man pick. <laughs> No, you, you think I'm kidding. I'm going to do it, too. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> you betcha. That's right. Yes, the judge says it's okay, so hey, that's all we need. There we go. So, yes, back from the big uh, big commercial break there, and it's good to, good to have you all back. I'd like to uh, welcome Bjorn Erickson in the uh, Spreaker.com chat room. Nice to see you, Bjorn. Good for hanging out with us today. Appreciate that. Uh, 3.30 in the city right now, and, uh, yeah, we're, we're, we're kicking it off. And, and what better way to kick off uh, your weekend uh, than to tell you where America drinks the most? Yeah. <laughs> Well, how much alcohol you drink depends a lot on where you live, of course. A new study finds that more than a third of adults in some areas drinking at dangerous levels. But huge variations in rates of heavy and binge drinking there is right across the USA. The study released today uh, says that adults ages 21 and up, published today in the American Journal of Public Health, finds nationwide levels of heavy and binge drinking on the rise, led by increases among women. Although women still drink much less than men do, the nationwide increases have been... Well, wait a minute. Where's the equality in that? (laughs) Damn it, we got to go out and get our women more drunk. Yes. (laughs) Get them drunk. Yeah. Which which, uh, woman are you married to or living with now? The same one? The what? The, do- the mother of the daughter? Or the was it a boy? Maybe, Louis, it doesn't matter. She's drunk. <laughs> yeah, I, I like to keep my wife nice and plastered. That's, yes. Uh, <laughs> that way I can do anything I want to her and uh, take pictures and put them up on buses in New York City. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I can do that because the judge said so. Yes. <laughs> you betcha. Well, nationwide increases have been reported in drinking previously. The new study is the first, though, to take a comprehensive county-by-county county look at where problem drinking is the worst and growing fastest. Just on a lark here, Gilbert, I'm going to say Kentucky. <laughs> I'm going to... <laughs> I'm going to say that's where the, yeah, uh, I'm going to, okay, let's get into it here. Let's see where it is. The percentage of people who drink is not changing much, but among drinkers, we are seeing more heavy drinking and more binge, binge drinking, says Ali Mokdad, an Islamic author of the, <laughs> of the study, who is a professor at the Institute for Health Metrics and Evaluation at the University of Washington. Quote, we're going in the wrong direction, he says. Heavy drinking defined as more than two drinks a day for men and more than one drink a day for women. See, there's no equality there. Yeah. <laughs> what, what the hell is that? we got to have some marches on Capitol Hill. Yes. <laughs> that's, that's enough. That's enough. we we got to even this boat up here. Well, uh, even a drink for day is linked to heart disease uh, for women, cancer, liver damage, and many other health problems. Binge drinking is defined as at least five drinks in one occasion for men and at least four for women. It is linked to car crashes, injury, and alcohol poisoning, as well as sad, sad radio hosting. (laughs) Yes. But I I don't do five a day. I do... Okay, nine. (laughs) All right, you caught me. Well, leading the nation in binge drinkers... Wisconsin's Monomi County, home of the Monomi Indian Reservation, where 36% of drinking age adults binge drink, least likely to binge drink, heavily Mormon Madison County, Idaho, where just 5.9% do. Leading in heavy drinking, sparsely populated Esmeralda County in Nevada, 
where 22.4% drink that much. Least likely to drink heavily is Hancock County in Tennessee's Appalachian Mountains, where the rate is 2.4. Damn, that's close to Kentucky. What the hell is going on? <laughs> Well, in general, the study finds the highest rates of overall and problem drinking in New England. Yes, along the Pacific coast and in northern parts of the West and Midwest. Overall drinking, the share of adults who have had even one drink in a month, is highest in affluent, well-educated communities led by suburban Falls Church, Virginia, where 78% of the drinking age adults drink in several counties in Colorado, including ski resort areas around Aspen and Breckenridge. 78% of the well-educated are drinking. That's because they've got to deal with the uh, ads on the MTA. That's that's what it is. <laughs> well, educated, affluent people enjoy a glass of wine every night, mostly, Mock Dad says. They can afford it, and they are cautious about their health. Problem drinking is generally most common in poor and rural areas, he said. While varying social norms and economic stresses play roles, accesses to alcohol matter too, he says. Several studies show that just having several bars close together can lead people to bar hop and binge drink, he says. The rankings give communities new ammunition to seek money and promote policies to address problem drinking, Mokdad says. Effective strategies include enforcing laws against drunk driving, holding bars responsible for serving drunk customers, and limiting the number of operating hours of bars and liquor stores, he says. Seeing how problem drinking varies even within one state should help such efforts, says William Kerr, senior scientist at the Alcohol Research Group. Man, that's where I want to work. Uh, so so, how's things going at work, William? Well, it's just great, man. It's just, it's for, uh, you know, it's, oh, you got a sweet wife. What yes. the fuck is that? Uh, what was my name? Uh, uh, yes, for example, he says, the study shows the heaviest binge drinking in Texas is along the border with Mexico. That can be useful for directing prevention and treatment efforts where they are needed most. He was not directly involved in the study. He was home sick. (laughs) I bet you that was a hangover. Yes. (laughs) Well, nothing is new to us, says Diane Hetpass, a health educator at Minomi Tribal Clinic in Kishino, Wisconsin. She says the clinic screens every patient over the age of 12 for problem drinking. Over the age of 12 for problem (laughs) drinking. (laughs) And that the community supports many prevention and treatment programs, including an annual sobriety powwow, but because they're Indians, they all get drunk at that, too. Just people just don't understand that this is a symptom of a much larger problem of poverty and trauma, Hypus says. Our people are hurting. <laughs> uh, see now now there's there's what I'm gonna do now. After I put up my hanging in a tree black man on the MTA, yes. <laughs> I'm gonna do, gonna do another ad next week. It will be one of the, you know those Indians dancing with all the feathers and all that yes. stuff and all that stuff going on and and uh, I'll just have the quote: "Our people are hurting." Yes. <laughs> <sighs> power tends to corrupt. Absolute power corrupts absolutely. <sighs> Thank you, Louis. Yeah. Uh, and I did not know that. No. Okay. <clears throat> so, yes, moving on, guess what, guys? We've got, that's right, Al-Qaeda news. <laughs> ah. You filthy American pigs. No longer would my men be forced to bow down to your pantyhose wearing imperialism. Each week, we will raise pillars of holy fire in each of your cities until our demands are met. Well, you know, you know, they're going to be taking out ads on the MTA. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> you betcha. That's right. Well, Al Qaeda hasn't gotten quite into the bus ads yet. 
But uh, they, uh, well, at least one cell planned a suicide attack on the Vatican. This report comes to us from Rome. Italian police busted an Al-Qaeda-linked terror ring that planned but never carried out an attack on the Vatican five years ago and is believed to have been involved in the bombing in Pakistan that killed more than 100 people, authorities said today. Raids were carried out simultaneously in seven different Italian provinces with arrest warrants for 18 suspected Islamic terrorists following a lengthy investigation in Caligari, the capital of the Italian island Sardinia. Authorities uncovered plans for a suicide bomber plot against the Vatican in 2010 when Pope Benedict the, I don't know, XVI... <laughs> <laughs> Let's see, what is that? Uh, X is 10, yes. and then, then the V is, of course, 5, yes. and then the I is me. <laughs> no? <laughs> so that's uh, that would be Pope Benedict the 16th, I yes. think. Yes. Yes. Damn, I'm good. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Well, back when he was pontiff, evidence includes the martyr's vow. <laughs> oh, from the would-be suicide bomber threatening to strike against the Vatican, the spiritual focal point for the world's 1.2 billion Catholics, Mario Carta, an official from the counter-terror police force that carried out the raids, called it one of the most important operations ever carried out in Italy. Police said the operation targeted an extremely well-structured terror network based in Sardinia uh, since at least 2005 that was made up of Pakistani and Afghan nationals. Uh, I don't know if you've been to Italy, but uh, I don't know. You know, I'm, I'm thinking they'd be pretty easy to pick out. Yes. <laughs> uh, That's what they've done. They've reached a particular point that they feel they're untouchable. Well, yeah, if I strapped on a bomb vest, nobody would want to touch me. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least I wouldn't think so. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> well, nine people were arrested and two are still at large in Italy. Seven of the suspects are to believe to have fled to Pakistan, Carter said. Italy was has mostly escaped terror attacks that have impacted other European countries, including Britain, France, and Spain. Plots have also been foiled by authorities recently in France, uh, the United States, and Australia. Concerns were raised earlier this year when the Islamic State issued a video threat to Italy that warned, quote, We are south of Rome. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I can see the bus ads now. Yes. Yeah. <clears throat> well, wiretaps show the Italian terror cell had strong connections to Al-Qaeda with references to the whereabouts of Osama bin Laden when he was alive. Carter said they were connected with Al-Qaeda at the highest level. Ah, they must have been run by that uh, Cartman terrorist yesterday. El <laughs> ah. <laughs> fat bastardo. Yes. yes. <laughs> Well, Vatican spokesman Federico Lombardi downplayed the 2010 plan today, saying it did not raise concerns because it seems to have been a proposal that they did not follow up on. However, had they, we would have shot them in the head long before they ever got here. Yes. <laughs> well, and, and, you know, that's true. You know, those, yes. those Vatican special guard dudes, you don't want to screw with them, even with a condom. Yeah. <laughs> Well, <clears throat> the terror ring is believed to have been involved in the 2009 bombing of an outdoor market in Penshwar, Pakistan, that left more than 100 people dead. This all, the, the cell also raised money to cover travel costs and buy weapons for terror plans outside Italy. Despite the group's deep roots in the country, Italians say they aren't worried. I don't think we should live in fear, says 55-year-old Moro Della Sita, a postal worker in Rome. Quote, their goal is to frighten us, end quote. Look for that ad on the MTA next week. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, Andrea Melisinka, 23 years old, a student in Rome, says, Our police and security forces has, have kept us safe so far. We have no reason to believe they won't continue that history. Hmm. Boom. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you forget the terrorist number one plot.
Boom. <laughs> Kill you. Yes. <laughs> well, hey, Gilbert, you're familiar with Teen Swingers Clubs? Hmm? Yes. Yeah? You sick bastard. You... <laughs> I was only kidding. I was just talking about uh, swingers clubs in general. But you know about those, right? Yes. Yeah, that's where you go and take your wife and try and pawn her off on some other poor sap. <laughs> And you try and get a little something, something yourself. Yeah. That's, <laughs> that's what we like to do on the weekend. Yes. <laughs> well, in Tennessee, a swingers club was to open a swingers club, and it's opened up as a church instead. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. In Nashville, the same address, the same owners, and the same floor plan but instead, instead of a sex swingers club, they anticipate a church now in Madison, Tennessee. Yeah. On paper, at least, that's the new plan for the property where a swingers club recently tried to open before city and state policymakers moved swiftly to block it. The owners now plan to open a church that caters to their club members. The United Fellowship Center will honor memberships from the social club, according to a member newsletter. But baseball caps, bandanas, skull caps, and sagging pants will not be tolerated. <laughs> and it's going to be a place where people can meet and enjoy fellowship. Uh, yes, that's what they're calling it now. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, says Larry Roberts, attorney for the owner. I assume if someone wants to meet there and wants to do something of a sexual nature, they'll go to a hotel or a motel or go home, he says. A church renovation plan was approved through the city's review process, allowing a work permit to be issued. Although their inspections are still yet to come, the floor plans for the club and now for the church show the same room layout with several label changes. The club's themed dungeon room... <laughs> Yeah, yes, the dungeon room will now be for the, quote, choir. Yes. <laughs> yes, because the, when, you, when you strap them all up in the chains and start whipping them, there's a lot of singing that goes on. Yeah. Ah, <laughs> oh, yes. There's a new pastor study penciled in as well. The move comes after state lawmakers blocked private sexual swinging clubs from locating within 1,000 feet of schools, churches, daycares, or parks. And the Metro Council changed its zoning code to block private clubs from properties zoned for office uses. Well, that's not very smart. You know, I, I like to leave the office and just zip down to the local swingers club. It's just... Uh, <laughs> It's it's convenient, damn it. Sex yeah. is only the tip of the iceberg. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, whatever. Both measures targeted at the social club, which applied to move into a former medical office on a property adjacent to the Good Pasture Christian School. Hmm. Yeah, that'd be a hell of a good marketing plan there, you know, get all those schoolgirls. <laughs> yeah. Yes, a massive backlash against the club, especially from churches, drew hundreds to Madison County meetings. While the club's attorney threatened a lawsuit of sale of the building to another controversial group, Robert said the Fellowship Center will require, quote, require, uh, wow, that's like four words there. Yes. Uh, <laughs> uh, the Fellowship Center will require a membership. A first event is not yet scheduled. Several of those who oppose the social club say they're skeptical of the change. Quote, I find it hard to believe that they've invested that kind of money and that they're just going to change the activity, says Ricky Perry, president of Good Pasture Christian School. I really hope that is true. I'd hate to lose all my girls. <laughs> uh, well, the story actually goes on for about another six paragraphs, but as you know, in coffee and cigarette style, we ain't going there. No. <laughs> It's just, it's just all that details crap. We don't need the details. <laughs> Bullshitters, never keep your mouth shut. Always hustling, always looking for something to do and, and putting things together. That's that's a f American. Look how they took the country away from England. Yeah, shut up, Arnold. <laughs> God. <clears throat> 
Well, we got frat news. That's right. If we didn't have enough, we got frat news. The University of Florida frat accused of spitting on veterans, peeing on the American flag, and a host of other lovelies. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, is coming up next right after the break. Back in two. You've got it locked to New York's best talk, HTLA Radio 1. Man, I've been to a lot of places over these past 50 years. Seen the whole true north strong and free. Cause I've been everywhere, man. I've been everywhere. I've been to Cooksville, Stowville, Bainesville, Bowmanville, Bonneville, Unionville, Oakville, Dunville, Brockville, Boucherville, Melville, Drummondville, Kentville, Grenville, Morinville, Maryville, Parksville, Stephenville, Sackville, Spring Hill, Westville, Walkerville, hanging on a windowsill. Hey! He said, wow, that's a lot of places. I said, hang on, there's more. I've been to Moncton, Picton, Shannon, Vernon, Stellarton, Hamilton, Nipigon, Nobleton, Yorkton, Brighton, Bolton, Beaverton, Brandon, Edmonton, Walkerton, Wyerton, Granby, Miramichi, Charlottetown, Burnaby, Yellow Knight, Whitehorse, Cornerbrook, none of it. I've been everywhere, man. I've been everywhere, man. I crossed the prairies, bare man. I breathed the mountain air. I traveled, I've done my share, man. I've been everywhere, man. It could be 7 in the morning. Or 10 at night. In Chilliwack, B.C. Or St. Peter's, Nova Scotia. It could be Michelle. Or Mark. Or Jen. But whenever. Wherever you order that cup of Tim Hortons premium blend coffee, you know that it's always. 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 Fresh. From Newfoundland and Labrador to Vancouver Island, Tim Hortons, a coffee all our own. When we arrived at our hotel in New York, the porter was so incredibly careful, careless with our bags. And the room they gave us, it was beautiful. A broom closet. But the best part, part was the shower. My wife drying herself with the Egyptian cotton towel shower curtain to find that whole vacation for her. Don't just visit New York. Visit TripAdvisor New York. With millions of reviews, a visit to TripAdvisor makes any destination better. Some said the U.S. has lost its innovative power. We said America is lighting the way as the innovation nation. Singular insights, superior execution. That's the power of global connections. Bank of America, Merrill Lynch. Voted top global research firm, 2011, 12, and 13. I've been so inspired by being in New York because everything from what people are wearing on the street to the way they're interacting with each other to drive through the West Village at night and you see a couple kissing on the street or you see someone fighting outside their apartment or you see so much humanity on a daily basis that even if you're not inspired by your own life that day, you can be inspired by someone else's life. You got that long hair sleep. There's only one place to get more Taylor. We're New York's best talk radio, HTLA Radio 1. I've been on enough radio shows (laughs) to know that in the middle of an answer, the guy is like checking the boards and looking over notes and well, talking to other people. Yes. <laughs> See? Now yeah, you're impressed. Yeah, yeah. No, you're not doing anything. <laughs> I don't know uh, what you're talking about, man. Uh, you sit down every day in your beautiful apartment uh, to your microphone and, and Skype. Yes. <laughs> 
I'm I'm running all the stuff here, baby. <laughs> Now, speaking of running all the stuff, welcome back to the big show this afternoon. Your coffee and cigarettes Friday Frappuccino on HCLA Radio 1, New York's Best Talk. 54 degrees outside now. It's getting downright toasty. I love yeah. it. <laughs> they get f***ing crazy because all of a sudden nobody loves them. Oh, yeah, Louie's still talking about the uh, the Muslims. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, you know, it, it happens, Lou. I mean, you know, this, what, are, what are they going to do? You know, there's, there's no there's no coming back from that. It's just, you know. You know why, Chris? Because you're such a, a control freak, you don't want anyone to tell you what to do. Yeah. Really? Is, is that? Yeah? You think so, huh? No. No. <laughs> oh, no, I don't. <laughs> Yeah, so it's a madhouse here today. We got the one, the only Louis Lawless coming to us from Mill Bay Studios in Mill Bay, British Columbia, Canada. We got the one, the only Gilbert Gottfried coming to us from his house just up the road. Yes. And that's it. We don't give crap about Arnold. <laughs> yeah. 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 You know. Well, we don't. We don't. So screw it. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I'm going to say about that one. Uh, yes, boom. Thank you. Welcome back to the show. 3.55 in the p.m. here in the city. Again, as I stated, it's, uh, well, it just kind of fantastically dropped two degrees to 51 now. But... <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was all excited at the commercial break. We, we go and I look up and it's, ooh, 53. Nice. And then and then just after I said it, it went to 51. Yes. Yes. <laughs> It's it's almost like the weather knows. As soon as I look at it, it goes away. Yeah. <laughs> oh, here a crash. Here's a little bit of hope. Here's a little bit of sunshine. Oh, gone. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> That's what it is. It's just gone. Well, before the break, I told you we we're going to tell you about more frat news, and, and oh boy, do we have some. The University of Florida frat that's accused of spitting on veterans and peeing on the American flag. Yeah, um, you're probably going to see just a, a, a global ban on uh, frats all over. Yeah. Now. Just, <laughs> that's it. We're done. The University of Florida's chapter of the Zeta Beta Tau fraternity is under investigation after members spit on and took flags from wounded veterans. Last weekend, Beta Z, Zeta Beta... Uh, screw this. I'm yeah. just going to say ZBT. That's yes. the, uh, <laughs> It's like that new chemical you spray on your lawn. Yes. <laughs> now, the ZBT students from UF and Emory University were in Panama City Beach for their spring formal. And they were staying at the Lake Town Wharf Resort where veterans were also staying for the Warrior Beach Retreat according to Linda Cope, founder of the retreat. For the past six years, the Warrior Beach Retreat has been hosted by Panama City Beach twice a year to bring wounded veterans and their families down to, to the beach to stare at some nice ass. <laughs> <laughs> now, Cope honors their son Joshua at the retreat. He lost both legs in his right hand after his vehicle hit a roadside bomb in Iraq, according to the retreat site. Quote, we focus on the caregiver and strengthening marriages, Cope says. That's our vision. The event brought together combat wounded veterans and included a parade on April 16th where between 8,000 and 10,000 people lined the streets. Cope said the students from Emory and UF acted dishonorably the next day. Members of the University of Florida chapter of the ZBT fraternity are under investigation after spitting and taking flags from wounded veterans. The students and veterans were in Panama City Beach when the incident occurred. Cope said the ZBT students picked on the veterans, spit on them with their service dogs, and urinated on American flags. In all of my years, I've never seen such debauchery and disrespect, Cope said. Oh, you should go to Vegas this weekend. You'll, <laughs> you'll, uh, <laughs> you'll get an eye opening. Yes. <laughs> uh, well, Janine Sykes, the assistant vice president for media affairs at UF, said UF President W. Kent Fuchs received an email from Linda Cope concerning the incident. Cope then received an email apology from Fuchs on Wednesday. Quote, I want to make de clear that I am deeply sorry for the affront that our students may have caused, Fuchs wrote in the email. 
I want to ensure you that it is not a representative of our students or our university, and we will take every effort to learn more, take appropriate action, and prevent similar incidents from occurring again. The University of Florida is extremely concerned about allegations, specifically of illegal behavior with our students, Sykes said. We're taking this matter very seriously and open an investigation to be determined what happened and what we need to do in response. Sykes said she is not sure how long the investigation may last. Uh, I'm thinking about 10 minutes on YouTube. <laughs> yeah, you get on there, you'll, you'll see everything you need to know. Yeah. Yeah. Executive Director of the National Zeta Beta Tau, Lawrence A. Bulletin, a University of Florida graduate from 2001, also wrote COPE stating Emory UF and the international headquarters are fully cooperating with the investigations of both chapters and have placed themselves under suspension. The UF chapter, which is currently under probationary status until December 19, 2015, wrote the Warrior Beach Retreat and veterans to offer apologies and to assure those involved would face consequences. According to the letter, as a fraternity, we have zero tolerance policy for such behaviors. You know, don't they always? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm going to teabag you with my testicles. Yeah, how do you like that? Yeah, vet. Yeah, you're an Iraq, oh, big man. Oh, I'm going to take your flag here. Look, I'm going to piss on your flag. I'm gonna... <laughs> See, I'm looking, I'm pissing on them. Say, how do you like that, vet boy? How are you? But we have zero tolerance. Uh, for the, uh, <laughs> we, we, we we won't take tolerate that at all. Yes. That's, that's, uh, yes. Yes. If those are found guilty, they'll be expelled. Yeah. Yes, uh, wow. You know what? How about kicking them right the hell out of America? That's that's what I'm talking about. Get them gone. They get f-ing crazy because all of a sudden nobody loves them. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, well, that's okay. So does Arnold. (laughs) Well, the UF chapter also offered financial assistance to the retreat so more veterans can participate in the coming years. Yeah, I'm sure they're going to want to go and take part in that. (laughs) Oh, we're going to let them do that, Cope said. I'm thinking different ideas because we could really use some fundraisers. Just let the vets go armed. Problem solved. (laughs) I won't have a problem then. Well, both national and UF chapters were contacted for comment, but of course did not return our phone calls. However, they released written statements. Emory has not yet contacted Cope. Quote, we've got nothing from Emory, she said. Not one word. Yeah, thanks. Appreciate that, dog. (laughs) Well, expulsion may not be the only punishment student-involved may face. Uh, Gainesville attorney Jeffrey Mason said this could qualify as a hate crime with additional battery charges. Mason said someone could make the argument that the veterans' national origin, the fact that they are Americans, was a factor. I would say especially if they were over 65, he continues, then that would be absolutely a hate crime if it's related to age. Prejudice towards physical disabilities or limitations can also be regarded as a hate crime. Quote, if they spit on a person, that's absolutely battery, Mason said. Mason said that Florida has provisions for dealing with battery of the elderly, which would be classified as a higher level crime. The maximum legal sentence would be five years in prison and up to a $5,000 fine. We take our seniors seriously. (laughs) Well, <clears throat> news today, the Statue of Liberty was evacuated on a report of a suspicious package. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes, in New York today, the Statue of Liberty and Liberty Island were evacuated today while police responded to a report of suspicious packages, according to the U.S. Park Police. Sergeant Lilani Woods, a public information officer for the Park Police, said that the island was evacuated as a precaution. The evacuation was ordered after a police dog picked up a positive scent during a routine patrol of a screening area next to a gift shop. This comes to us from the Daily News. Quoting an unidentified police source, visitors were taken from the island by boat to Battery Park and Liberty State Park in Jersey City, the news reports. Uh, No word as to uh, if and when the explosions are going to ensue. Right. Okay. (laughs) 
Uh, so yeah, we we might just not have any uh, Statue of Liberty anymore. But you know, we don't have it anyway. Look at the damn buses. Yes. <laughs> Well, got some a, a little interesting news today to close out the show. Uh, after a premonition of danger, a wife saves her husband. Yeah. Scott Mayhew was working on a car inside his Utah garage Monday when it fell off the jack onto his chest. He was trapped. He cried for help and, and over an hour and a half to no avail. He said he remembers he could barely breathe. Wife Nicole tells Fox 13... He didn't know what was going to happen. What happened was that she came home and found him, called 911, and got a neighbor to help lift the vehicle using the jack. It's why she came home. That's remarkable. She was at work that morning and suddenly had a premonition. It, I just said I needed to go check on him working on the car. I just believe a spirit told me, she says. <laughs> Well, you know, you, you, you can never discount the spirits. I mean, just look at the Indians. They, <laughs> <you know. laughs> As she got there, Saratoga, Saratoga Springs home and heard her husband calling. She had a vision of what she'd find in the garage. I thought, it's on him. I thought it's got to be on him, the car that was in my head. So I knew immediately, she says, she found the 43-year-old father of five who said that he'd been praying for her to come home under the Ford Explorer. Paramedics responded, and though responders were concerned about possible internal bleeding, Scott is expected to make a full recovery. He broke six ribs. I consider him extremely lucky, says a paramedic, telling ABC News. He could have lost his life and been under the car much longer. Oh, and if that weren't enough, no, the crowdfunding campaign <laughs> is uh, aiming to raise money for the time that he's out of work. And the crowdfunding campaign right now is at $1.7 million. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's good. He'd be able to take a week off. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Well, gang... That is your coffee and cigarettes, your Friday Frappuccino for Friday, April 24th. Still 51 degrees in New York City, so hey, if you're around the city, get the hell out there and do something. Don't just sit here and look at me. <laughs> oh, yes. Got to thank the one, the only, Louis Lawless for being here. Thank you, sir. Uh, it's just life, and I love doing it. I love doing these kind of stories anyway. Um, yes, and you contributed so much. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, thank you, Gilbert, of course, for being here today. Thank you for listening uh. and support the show for the love of God. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh. And, of course, the one, the only, Arnold Schwarzenegger. Thanks so much for being here, jerk off. Absolutely. Thank you very much, and I'll be back. Uh, don't think so. Yes. <laughs> no. no. You're done. I'm going to get Iron Man in here. Screw you. <laughs> Well, and to the rest of you out there, have a great afternoon. Uh, get out, get something going on. I don't know, grab a Frisbee or something. They still have those. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, my dog, she she ate ours. So yes. Yeah, it's, it's gone. But I don't know, maybe in another six months, I can save up enough money to get another one. Yeah. <laughs> And thanks to all you listeners out there in uh, iHeartRadio land, uh, Clear Channel, iNet, No Net, I don't yes. know. <laughs> all those places, Spreaker, you know, Stitcher, check you all later. We'll catch you Monday for the Monday Mocha, 3 p.m. Eastern. So, remember, life still a poor substitute for video games.